bringing the people behind our food to life. been digging. My name is Lynn Penner Ash and I'm winemaker and owner along with my husband Ron. We created our own brand Penner Ash Wine Cellars in 1998 and in 2002 we formed a partnership with Chris and Tyen Dustin. It's winter here. Um, we're in the Wapato Valley which is part of the Chehalem Valley in the North Willamette Valley of Oregon and we're just out here looking at our different vineyard sites surveying them to see what kind of damage we might have experienced from the most recent rains. So that's our erosion issue right here. And we put a drain in, um, but it's obvious we thought we were capturing where most of the water drains, but we need to lower this and maybe put a little channel or curtain drain, something to direct it more into the, the uh, drain itself. It's just learning your vineyard. It takes a couple of years to figure out where the water travels and then take care of it. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing here in the next week when we can start getting in here and digging again. I think people think we just sit, sit around the fire and drink wine all day long, but honestly, January, February, the winter months, there's a lot going on. You know, that's a lot of long days of just cleaning equipment and putting it away. I am Ron Penarash, and uh, this is a second career for me. Good. I love what I do, and I love the idea that we're building this brand. One of the things I do enjoy about being in the cellar is it's very task-oriented, so You've got to organize yourself and you go from one task to the other. And I'm going to take that rosé off cold stabilization. We're going to take it off a tank that's been cooled down to about 35 degrees um, and bring it into a warmer tank to prep it for bottling, essentially. It's so pretty in the mouth. And see, that's when you're talking about, Dick was asking about bottling. I just tasted that 04 in the barrel, and I just felt like the texture was there, the intensity of fruit was there. We didn't want to lose anything by barrel aging it more. I think it came together beautifully in the bottle. I'm right back and tell you all about Chuck Norman. I think Pinot Noir is the hardest variety of grape to make and do it well. And I like to say, if you've done a great job with Pinot Noir, you're going to have this epiphany and go, oh, this is incredible. But that said, there are those vintages, or I should say, sometimes those barrels that you go downstairs and you taste and you're just like, ah, oh, you know, it's about the worst wine you've ever tasted. People use the term and maybe it's overused, but it is, it's truly the holy grail of wine. Because when you've got a, a well-made Pinot Noir, it's an experience to have tasting a, a great Pinot Noir. There you go. How about that side? Thanks, Thank sure. you. Okay. See ya. I love coming out to the winery. I look forward to going down and checking on your kids as such, checking on the wines downstairs, because wines are a living thing and they evolve constantly and they won't be the same from day to day. And so for me, the excitement is getting up in the morning, knowing you're coming out to this beautiful, beautiful winery, but also getting to run downstairs and check on things and taste things. You know, I love tasting wine at eight in the morning just to kind of get a feel for what's going on. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to take a sample from a barrel of our own vineyard property. This came in in September. It's our first crop, so we're really very, very excited to have it, and we love tasting it. It's Pinot Noir, and it's the Pomard clone, and this is how we like to spend our days here. Normally I would spit this out. It's too good to spit out. <laughs> when we're finished, um, you have the sense of accomplishment because a lot of the tasks in winemaking are, are finite. You get through them and you know you put the wine to barrel and that's done, or you've racked a wine and that's done. And so you can have a sense of accomplishment, but there's always, again, there's always that kind of planning and, and thinking ahead that takes place. And so after you've done that task, then I usually go home and go for a walk. But kind of straighten out in my head, okay, what's kind of the next game plan for the week, for the month, for the year? And I do a lot of thinking about the future. Winter doesn't seem very slow to us. 